like your excitement i said praise the lord something good is happening to you and today you'll take your highest desire what you want what you desire and what you pray for and what you are expecting it will come right there on your lap miracle wonders healing deliverance salvation and the ticket to the goodness of god father we thank you today and bless your name we thank you for what you have been doing what you are doing now and what you will yet do i pray that this will be the day of open door to the miracle life in jesus name and I pray, Lord, the joy of the Lord will come to everyone. Every brother, every sister, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl here and over there, everywhere. I pray, Lord, you minister to your people and you give them the real need of their lives in Jesus' name. Perfect your work in everyone. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God at the Alpha location shout. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Today we are coming to an important message. Every message is important, but this one, for this hour, for this time, is for you. Amen. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 35 and I'm reading from verse 3. It says in Isaiah chapter 35 and I'm looking at verse 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Then in verse 4, in verse 4 it says, Say to them that of a fearful heart, of a timid heart, of a feeble heart, Tell them and say to them of a weakened heart. It says, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Vengeance? What does that mean? The one Satan who has been tormenting your life. The Lord God will come from heaven with vengeance. Knock his hand out of your life. And all those secret things, all those hidden things that are trying to torment your life, tear your life, torture your life, tear you apart, God comes with vengeance. It may be disease, it may be something that is sucking out all your money, all your finance, and then you are suffering as a result of that sin, that element, that impediment, that evil, tormenting your life, the Lord God will come tonight from heaven Amen. with vengeance and strike off and take off and destroy everything militating against your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. Did you hear that? That should put a smile on your face because now salvation, total salvation, full salvation is coming your way today. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. And then he tells us in verse 5, it says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Tonight, tonight, the eyes of the blind cataract will vanish away what they call glaucoma will vanish away and what we call dimness of sight everything will vanish away it's a day of the open door to the wonder working power of god and it says the ears of the dead shall be unstopped you need an amen there deaf ears will open Dumb tongues will speak out. And then he says in verse 6, it says, Then shall the lame leap 
ass and heart. That means that today, if you have anything wrong with your motion, with your standing, with your walking, with your running, the power of God is coming upon your life tonight. And you lame person there with your own legs, you cannot use other people's legs to walk, you have to use your own legs. You cannot use other people's feet to run or to stand, you have to use your, and the Lord said that it is coming your way tonight. He said, then shall the lame man leap as an arch, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. Ready to sing? A new song will come to your mouth. And it says, for in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Today, look at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us, and an highway shall be there, and highway shall be there, an expressway shall be there, a sort of fair way shall be there. There will be no blockage on, uh, on your way today. There will be no checking point. What do you want? Healing? Okay, stop. Park your car there. And let me see. No particulars tonight. I said no hindrance tonight. Highway, straight way, express way that we are taking and we are getting into the blessing of God tonight. And it says, and highway shall be there, a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. And the unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the way fearing men, though fools, though ignorant, though they do not know much of the verses and all that, and we do not read all the verses and they remain fools it says and uh, even though they are fools they will not err they will not make any mistake and they will not miss what God has provided for them they shall not err therein and then it says in verse 9 in verse 9 it says no lion shall be there what he's saying is you know the, uh, that man the lazy man the ideal man of Proverbs he said I, can, I cannot go out because a lion is in the way there's no lion in your way tonight there's no hindrance in your way tonight you cannot say i'm afraid i cannot go out there i'm afraid i cannot raise my hand i am afraid i'm afraid i cannot hold the miracle i'm afraid i cannot get what the lord has provided for me because there's a lion there and he said watching once i move like that then it, you know crushes my voice says there's no lion on your way tonight in the way of life it Eternal in the way of having the blessing of God, no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon, it shall not be found there. There's no excuse tonight, a ravenous beast, an injurious person, a cruel person, something, somebody is standing in my way, so I cannot have miracle today. All the hindrances are cleared up. You have miracle tonight. You have salvation tonight. Oh, you know that lion, Satan, is, we're told, he is roaring like a lion. No roaring of satanic lion today in your life in Jesus' name. It shall not be found there. The way is clear. And then you have the wonder of God, the miracle of God, the salvation of God. And you have all the deliverance and everything Calvary has provided. Everything available for you, for me, for us, for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. But the redeemed shall walk there. The redeemed, those who are ransomed those who are purchased by the blood of the Lamb and those who come to the Lord and the Lord takes away all their sin and all the consequences of sin and it says the redeemed shall walk there now those redeemed there are two types today number one those who have been redeemed already saved already they are the Lord already that's group one those who are going to be redeemed tonight they being in darkness tonight they are coming me to the light. They are being the, you know, kind of very sinful and deep in sin. As we are going deeper in holiness, they have been going deeper and deeper and deeper in sinfulness. But now today they come. They say, I want to live where I am and I want to be on that other side. Well, the redeemed of the Lord, he will forgive your sin tonight. 
it will change your life tonight it will turn everything around and then heaven will recognize you as the redeemed of the lord and then those new people the redeemed of the lord will the redeemed of the lord who have been redeemed before they now come and they shall walk therein and you walk into miracle and you walk into wonders i'm talking to you tonight on the highway to the wonders of our wonder walking god the highway to the wonders of our wonder walking god look at verse 10 in verse 10 it tells us and the ransomed of the lord shall be there shall return and come to zion with songs and with everlasting joy the joy that starts today will continue everlasting in your life everlasting joy upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing and sorrow and suffering and sorrow and sickness and sorrow and uh, satan will flee away you run away from you. You've been running and running all these many years in your life, and sorrow running after you. No matter where you go, I'm getting it. that's what they said. And suffering running after you, and satanic attack, affliction running after you. Now you'll be redeemed tonight. You will stop. You'll turn around. And as you look at them, you dare not look at them in the past because they used to oppress, they used to torment, they used to degrade, and they used to disgrace, and they used to put that pressure on you. And you're always looking away from them, and they were running and running and running over after you, begging them, did not serve pleading with them will not serve and the more you plead the more you beg it's like uh-huh it's feeling the heat and now they put the heat more and then you have been looking away from them you are afraid to look at them but now tonight you turn around and look at that sorrow that suffering that sickness that satanic affliction eyeball to eyeball and you'll see the fire of heaven coming out of your eyeballs and then they will flee away they will flee away all those problems are getting away from you tonight in jesus name there is a highway there is an expressway there is a sort of fear that we take as we believe in the lord and we come and when we come we come to a wonder walking god and wonders will take place in our lives three things i'm talking about tonight number one the only way the only way number two is the ordained way the ordained way that god himself had ordained in heaven and he says this is the ordained way if you come through this way you have life you have eternal life you have abundant life and you have a spiritual life and you have everything packed into this new life that you have number one is the only way number two the ordained way and number three is the open way you know even if the way is good if they lock the gate and nobody can get in it will be of no use only way ordained way open way number one is the open way to the wonder of the, of great salvation the only way to the wonder of great salvation number two the ordained way to the wonder of gracious healing healing by grace you don't pay anything for it it's available and everyone can come and collect his soul and carry his soul and take his soul and partake of the healing power of the lord the lord has ordained the way the way the way to the wonder of his gracious healing number three in the open way to the wonder of God's sufficiency. God's sufficiency in your life today, you'll find God is sufficient, He is able, He is willing, 
is mighty, he is powerful, he is purposeful, and then he is sufficient. Every need you have, every situation you have today, you'll find that God is sufficient for you tonight. How can somebody go empty-handed when the wonder of salvation is there? How can you go empty-handed when the wonder of healing is there? How can you go empty-handed when the wonder of his sufficiency is here waiting for you? You will not go empty-handed. I'm looking at number one. Number one is the only way to the wonder of great salvation and look at Isaiah chapter 26 and I'm reading there from verse 1 Isaiah 26 reading from verse 1 in that day this is the day shall this song be song in the land of Judah we have a stronger city salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks it says we have have a strong city impenetrable city that the thief that Satan and the emissaries and the cohorts and the servants of Satan cannot penetrate it's a strong city and the Lord has raised up the Savior and when you come it says it will give us salvation salvation will God appoint for wars and bulwarks it means that salvation has been appointed for you and they have put your name he is coming he, the Lord knew you will come today don't you know that? don't you know that he knew you will be here today don't you know that he knew your life and he knew how dirty and deep it has been and he said I love him like I love the whole world God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever and you are that whosoever that whosoever believeth in Christ will not perish but have everlasting life Salvation is written down for you. For me. Where are you? You will get it in Jesus' name. No other person will carry your salvation away. But you come to the Lord and salvation have been appointed for you. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, The way of the just is uprightness. And it says, Thou most upright dost weigh the path of the just. He knows that he has justified him. What does that mean? You were guilty. And then you come to the court. And Jesus came to whisper in your ears, I will stand for you. I will bear whatever price you have to pay I'll bear it for you and then when you are called and you say guilty or no or no guilt or not guilty and Jesus says I'll answer for you he was guilty I bore his guilt and now the guilt is taken away he should have been punished but I bear the punishment and therefore the punishment will not come to him anymore because God does weigh the path of the just. He weighs it. My son has paid your price. My son has bought your salvation. My son has provided your salvation. Now you are justified. Now you are just in Jesus' name. Look at verse 13. In verse 13 it says, O Lord our God, all the Lord serve beside thee have had dominion over us all the lords beside thee had had dominion and they had that lordship and they had that mastery over us they were literally walking on us they were trampling on us but now he says but by thee only the only way to that wonder of salvation is to know that he only can save. He only can forgive. He only can cleanse your heart from sin. He only can set you free. It says, but by thee only we will make mention of thy name. Praise the Lord. It has happened already. And it's just for you to stand up when the time comes and to come claim what the Lord had made available for you. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 45. I'm reading from verse 21. Isaiah chapter 45. 
And we're reading from verse 21. In verse 21, it says, Tell ye and bring them near. He told me to come and tell you and bring you near. In your mind, come near. You're thinking, I'm far from righteousness. I'm far from the grace of God. I'm far from the goodness of God. I am far from the salvation of the Lord. He said, I should tell you to come near in your mind. See it in your mind. See it with your vision, spiritual vision. Christ is there. Is not far away. He is a savior. He is the only savior in my heart, in my mind. I move away from my sin. I move away from my transgression. I move away from my iniquity. I move away from the works of darkness in my hand. And I come near and near and near to Christ. And now I'm in the presence of Christ in my mind. By my faith, by my believing, by my knowledge and knowing that he died for me. And that he wants me saved. It's waiting for me. It says, tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. And then it says, who has declared this from ancient times and who has told each from that time have not I the Lord and there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. A just God and a Savior. What does that a, a just God? What does that mean? Uh, it's like, you know, think of when we are at school and uh, your junior brother has done something, uh, you know, that requires some beating. And you look at your junior brother and you say, why did you do that? And then he says, let's go. And then you go to the teacher, to the principal, to headmaster, wherever. And uh, which of you did that thing? My junior brother did it. But sir, this boy is scared to death. It's like, you know, even to get only one, one of those waves, the boy might sink into the ground. And he says, sir, I've been here. I know how to manage that. I can take it for him. Are you sure of that? Yes, I'll take it for him. And your junior brother is there. And then one, two, three, four. And the thing, then you rub your hands together, you've got it. Will they still beat your junior brother? Tell me, tell me. A just God cannot punish one uh, sin into people. This man committed the sin. That woman committed the sin. And look at Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, the man is scared to death. The woman is scared to death. And I'll bear it for him. A just God and a Savior will not punish you for the same sin that he laid on Jesus, that Jesus suffered. It's justice demands that because Jesus bore the pain and he bore the consequence of your sin you will not bear it anymore Amen. you're free Amen. I am free that's why hey, let's look at that verse again it says there is no God else beside me it's just God and his savior and there is none beside me he is the only savior this is the only way that leads to the wonder of great salvation look at verse 22 now because it's a just god and because christ is only begotten son has borne all that shame all that sorrow and the eternal judgment and punishment for you now he says look unto me I mean you say somebody else are taking your punishment somebody else are taking all the eternal doom and suffering you should have now he says look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth here and there online everywhere now salvation has come for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none else. Is the only God 
that can plan the way of salvation. It's the only God that can effect the reality of salvation. He is the only God that can produce the evidence of salvation in your life. He will do it. All you need to do is come. Let me show you. Isaiah chapter 55. And we're reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 55. And we're reading from verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. I thought we can find the Lord anytime. Really? Yes, theoretically. But if somebody has an accident and is feeling pain, you touch him like this, there's pain. All he can think about will be pain. He may say, oh God, he's not praying. He's expressing the feeling of his fear and the feeling of his pain and then when you carry him when you stretch him on the stretcher and he's really groaning at that time he cannot begin to think logically and say okay i confess my sin if i confess my sin is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse me from all righteousness the verse is there the god is there but the man cannot you know make anything out of that at that time if you think of a man that fell into the river and now in the river is he has not died is alive and the bible is still true and god is still true but now he cannot have the mind to pray and the mind to seek the lord all is thinking of i'm dying i'm dying i'm drowning and because of that there is a time at this time now when you can hear at this time now when you can reason at this time now when you can think at this time now when you can hold on to the promise of God seek ye the Lord while he may be found and call ye upon him while he is near when you come and then he's near he's saving somebody by your side there he's saving the other person at your back there he's saving another person close to you and near to you there you know he is near his grace is flowing his power is flowing his mercy is flowing and everything he wants to do for salvation is doing left and right and center is very near and then you call upon him while he's doing that for others and he's near look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says let the wicked forsake his way what's that saying it's saying i want to save the wicked but there's only one condition that I save you, I forgive you, I turn your life around, and the wickedness of the wicked, you push behind you. And whatever it is you are using as the instrument of wickedness, you push that all behind you. It says, let the wicked forsake its way. You see, the wicked people don't have the same way. There is the wicked man that, you know, when he gets angry, he takes a bottle, breaks the bottle, and he doesn't care whether it's the wife or the child or the neighbor. He doesn't care. He's going to use that instrument. Other people don't do that. Other people, the wicked, they don't use a bottle. They use their pen to write something acidic that when people read it's like they put the man the woman is writing about in a bucket of acid it will burn him off other people don't do that they form a great lie and then they put it in social media you see the way of the wicked differs from one person to the other other people can be wicked and they can be smiling other people get wicked and they are frowning other people get wicked and they are visibly angry. Other people are wicked and they are psychologically, physiologically pleasant and they hide their wickedness in their heart. And it says, whatever your way and whatever your method and whatever your weapon of wickedness, it says, let the wicked forsake his own peculiar way of wickedness and the unrighteous man 
his thoughts. You know, nobody can do evil without first of all thinking it, thinking it within himself. The imagination, the evil imagination, the murderous imagination, the imagination within that pushes a man, that pushes a woman to do evil. Think about that. And now let the righteous man forsake his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. Every time somebody does wickedness, is traveling farther and farther and farther away from the Lord. Every time somebody thinks of evil and he wants to perpetrate evil, is traveling farther and farther from the Lord. Every time somebody thinks about sin and about unrighteousness, every time his thought comes like that and you yield to that thought and you act on that thought, you are going farther and farther away from God. God and the love of God. And he says, return. Let the wicked return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For he will, he will pardon. He will abundantly pardon. Do you say amen to that? Yes. Do you believe that? Do you accept that? He will pardon you abundantly today. What's the difference to pardon? And then to abundantly pardon. You know, sometimes you have, um, you want to sleep, and you have a cover cloth. And that cloth just covers you. Just you. And if you move like this, you can, you, can, you know, get off that uh, cloth and that thing that covers you. But when it's abundant, it's wide. And it's long. And it goes beyond covering you and it covers you through and through forever. And it says, let him return unto the Lord our God. And the Lord will pardon, not only pardon, the Lord will abundantly pardon you. Every sin, every wickedness, every evil, everything that brings guilt to you, the Lord will take everything away and put in the sea of God's forgetfulness. Number one, the only way, the only way, the only way to the wonder of great salvation. Number two now is the ordained way to the wonder of gracious healing, of gracious healing. Are you there? Yes. I said, are you there? Yes. Are you there? Yes. Healing coming your way. Yes. Gracious healing that somebody else has paid for that. You're saying, I don't have any money to pay. Christ paid for your healing. I don't have anything to give. Christ gave his very life so that the very life of Christ will come unto you. And the life of Christ is not a sickly life. It's not a weak life. It's not a feeble life. It's not a life that is almost dying but living. And the very life of Christ and the health of Christ is going to give unto you. And there is the ordained way that the Father in heaven has ordained how that healing graciously will come unto you. In Isaiah chapter 26, read here from verse 12 Lord thou wilt ordain peace for us no disease no pain no torture no torment no sleeplessness it says Lord thou wilt ordain peace for us for thou also hast wrought all our works in us the work of healing thou hast wrought the work of deliverance thou hast wrought and the work the word of peace the work of peace peace in the soul peace in the mind peace in my personality it says thou hast wrought all our works in us all you need to do is come get it it's waiting for you in Isaiah chapter 33 verse 14 Isaiah chapter 33 And we're reading from verse 14 It said The sinners in Zion are afraid Normally Zion is for the citizens of God's kingdom 
Zion is for the people who are ransomed and redeemed. But there are people that try to sneak in into Zion. They're not saved. They're not born again. They're still living in their peculiar sins. Hidden. Covered. And then, uh, even though they are in Zion, because of what is inside them, their sin, uh, their evil, they are afraid. They should be afraid. They should be afraid of torment eternal. They should be afraid of punishment eternal. They should be afraid of hellfire. They should know that sneaking into Zion and still continuing in sin that that will not favor them you cannot come and say i'm an inhabitant of uh, zion but how about your life how about the wickedness how about the transgression the sinners in zion are afraid fearfulness are surprised the hypocrites who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting bunnies? Now in verse 15, in verse 15 it says, He that walketh righteously. Now these are the people in their Zion with their heart, their mind, their soul, everything within them. And they have the salvation of the Lord. And then their body has become the temple of the Holy Ghost. And it says, they despise the gain of oppression, bribery, corruption, giving bribes, taking bribes, no more in their lives. And telling lies or, or uh, practicing deception to get money, 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 money. All that is not in them anymore. If all that deception, if all that lying is stealing a man and he wants to get money, 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 anyhow, anyway, is one of those sinners in Zion. They'll be afraid, afraid, afraid of eternal punishment. But now, those who have turned, those who have repented, and they come to the Lord and they hate, they despise the gain of oppression. They hate and they shake their hands from holding up bribes and that stopped their ears from hearing of blood and shutted their eyes from seeing evil. You know, sometimes you can see evil privately on your tablet and privately on your iPad and privately on your phone and you can see blood and see people gunning each other down and all that and then you are you are awake and you're looking at that it says if you enjoy one man killing the other and you watch it on the screen and you take and you take delight in that it says no you are sinner in Zion today everything will change all those crimes you watch, today everything will stop. You see that those who enjoy, even though you are not the one doing the killing, but you enjoy watching it. You enjoy, you delight in it. It says you'll be a sinner in Zion, but now you will not hold bribe. You will not take bribe. You will not send somebody to go and give the bribe on your behalf. And then it says that stoppeth his ears from hearing blood and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. Look at verse uh, at verse uh, 20, at verse 16 there. Verse 16, it says, He shall dwell on high. 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 You will dwell in heaven. As you turn away from those evil things, and then you say, Lord, now my totality, soul, spirit, and body, my heart, my life, everything now dwelling in a practical way in Zion, in the presence of God, it says, it shall dwell on high. And the place of defense shall be the munitions of the rocks, and bread shall be given him. Hunger will vanish away. 
starvation will vanish away malnutrition will vanish away in your life and then it says his waters shall be sure you didn't say amen to that and now in verse 17 <clears throat> in verse 17 then eyes shall see the king in his beauty they shall behold the land that is very far off now look at verse 24 in verse 24 it tells us and the inhabitants shall not say i am sick no more sickness in your body no more sickness from tonight no more sickness is that possible ask peter all the time he was following after christ no sickness only the mother of the wife got sick and jesus healed her and after that time peter wife mother-in-law no more sickness me 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 today me no more sickness your husband your husband he will get well no more sickness your wife no more sickness your son your daughter that deformity will vanish away because the inhabitants of the land it says when you come to zion and you live in zion and you live in the goodness of the lord in zion your wife will not die prematurely your husband will not die prematurely our ministers our singers our ushers our security and the people that are serving us day and night they deny themselves they will not die prematurely and all of you the beautiful faces i see here tonight when i come back you will still be alive i think i am older than most of you and if i'm coming back that means i'm still alive if i your father the older person the elder if i do not die prematurely my children will not die prematurely and it says and it says and the inhabitants shall not say i am sick no sickness for us anymore the people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity amen amen, amen. <laughs> what did i say that twice i said one for myself i said the other one for you now we're looking at Isaiah chapter 58 and I'm reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 58 and we're reading from verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth at the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Your health, your healing will come speedily tonight in Jesus name and thy righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the lord shall be the rare word we're coming to point number three now point number three we're coming to this and this is the only the open way to the wonder of god's sufficiency the ordained way the only way the open way now to the wonder of god's sufficiency the way is open for you tonight and let me show you an example of what i mean the way open i said the way open now all children are coming to school and they open the gate and as they open the gate one goes in but all these others are members of that and students in that school will they close the gate after the first one has gone in the gate remains open and they say go in i'm talking about you go in i'm talking about you there and then as they all go in and there's nobody outside anymore 
then the gate might be closed or they might just leave open the gate there should in case one somebody is coming late but it's a gate man there and there is holding the door for you can you come in let me show you our sister. Uh, her name is, um, you know, <laughs> no, a brother now. When we're talking about sisters, now a brother is uh, Mr. Solomon. He will tell you himself the great, great thing that happened. What I'm saying is the door was open to him, and Mr. Solomon is going in now. And then, after he has gone in and he's got the healing, he's got the miracle, will they shut the door? You'll be the next one you're going. Over there, after Mr. Brother, Pastor, Solomon, whatever title, after he has gone in, the way will still be open for you. And if I go in, they will not shut the door after I go in. The door remains open for you. For your happiness, for your health, for your salvation, for your miracle, for the bounty. The way is open for everyone tonight. Let brother Solomon, Mr. Solomon, whatever, let him talk to us now. He went through that open door. My name is Omafagbaro Solomon. August 15th, 2022, I was diagnosed of kidney stone. I could not do anything. It's my younger brother. I really want to bless God because this situation is really terrible. God helped us. He seriously is in pains, but God took away everything free of charge. Each time he will call, we will just encourage him. GCK is coming. Are you in the church? Are you there? When I called my parents to tell them of my condition, they told me that Solomon, you are a child of God. Go to the uh, uh, GCK is about to start. Go and receive your healing there, which I did. In the month of October, when the man of God was praying, I said, today I must receive my healing, which God perfected the healing in my life. When I went back for the scan, they said, kidney stone is no more. So after that one, I was also having neck pain. I was having pain in my left side of the body. We doctor gave me neck collar to wear that uh, a nerve in my spinal cord is no longer functioning. So I said, God, you are the one that did the first one for me and you will still do this one for me. So during the GCK of November, the, fourth, the fifth day of the GCK, after the final amen, everything went off. And we have seen the evaluated reports of the scan it took at the Delta State University Station on Twitter, the absence of the kidney stone is confirmed. And uh, with this issue of the cervical disc prolapse, which has also been taken away indeed, this is a spectacular divine intervention. I have not seen any pain again, neither have I cried of such pain again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now the way is open. He went in, you are going in. Healing for you, deliverance for you, the power of heaven coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. The open way to the wonder of God's sufficiency. We're looking at Isaiah chapter. 41. Isaiah chapter 41. We're looking at verse 18. In Isaiah chapter 41, reading from verse 18, I will open rivers in high places, foundations in the midst of the valley. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water. The Lord is opening the way right now and now blessings await you salvation awaits you deliverance awaits you and you will come in i see chapter 60 i'm reading from verse 1 i say 60 and we're reading from verse 1 it tells us arise shine are you ready 
arise shine every gloomy scene every dark scene in your life everything taken away today in jesus name for the light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee look at verse 2 it says in verse 2 for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and the and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you in verse 3 it says in verse 3 and the gentle shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says therefore the gates shall be open continually the gate of salvation open continually and the gate of healing deliverance and the gate of power of wonders open continually they shall not be short day nor night that's why we can get saved in the morning we can get saved in the afternoon and this evening we can get saved because it says the gate shall not be short day nor night and then it says that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and, the, and that their kings may be brought. Look at verse 18. In verse 18 it says, Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. It says, Wasting not destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt be called thy wars they shall call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. Look at verse 19 there. In verse 19, the sun shall no more be thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord himself shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And I got thy glory. Then in verse 20, it says in verse 20, Thy sun shall no more go down. Yeah. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of mourning, the days of weeping, the days of crying, the days of sorrow shall be ended tonight i say tonight all the sin all the suffering all the evil will be ended tonight for you in jesus name look at verse 21 in verse 21 thy people also shall all be righteous he'll cleanse your heart he'll forgive you he'll take away your sin and god will look at you as righteous and they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hands that i may be glorified your life will glorify the lord now look at you look at this verse 22 look at this look at this verse 22 a little one shall become a thousand today you are little but when you come if you remain like where you are little you remain little if you're still using all the things that you have done you have used all these years and they didn't bring you up you remain little but when you take your stand today and you say i see the open way and i come through that open gate and open door that little one there you become a thousand and it says a small one shall become a strong nation i the Lord will hasten it in his time. This is your time. And the Lord wants to hasten that salvation. He wants to hasten that redemption. He wants to hasten that healing. He wants to hasten that deliverance. Are you ready? It's bowed and eyes closed. This is our chance. We have Christ the only way. 
we have Christ the Savior, the ordained way. And we have Christ, it's still the same Christ. He is the open door, the open way that leads into life eternal. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You want to make up your mind that you are turning away from every sin that had closed the door of salvation for you. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man let him forsake his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. Let him repent. Let him return unto the Lord and the Lord will abundantly pardon you tonight. Give me a good amen. amen. As we bow our head and close our eyes, you want to do that. You are returning to the Lord now. The way is open. The way Christ, that's the only way. The way Christ is the ordained way to that salvation. And he is the savior of every sinner that will turn away from sin and turn to the Lord. Raise up that hand there. God bless you. They're wonderful. God bless you. They're online. Raise up your hand there. God can see you there. Wonderful. Over the radio, over the television. Anyway, you are now raise up your hand. You want to come through this open way and the only way, the ordained way to the wonder of the salvation of God. If you are raising up your hand, God bless you. You can stand up right now. You say, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You say, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I come for your salvation. I want the wonder of salvation right now. All my sins forgiven, and then my soul is ransomed and redeemed and purchase and I come now to Zion and I leave all my sins behind and I have the salvation the righteousness of the Lord you are raising up your hand you are standing up God bless you God bless you God bless you there stand up stand up before we pray we're praying now and since the way of salvation is open and you are entering in the salvation of the Lord will come to you now Let's pray, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I pray for all these who have called upon you, who lay everything down, who are not fighting against your will, your salvation anymore. Forgive them in Jesus' name lay all their sins on Christ. And as a just God, you cannot punish two people for the same sin that somebody had paid for. And therefore, Lord, I pray peace of mind will come to them. Joy of salvation will come to them. And the new life of salvation will show, will be evident in their lives in Jesus' name. Confirm their forgiveness, their freedom, their righteousness, their redemption. Confirm their salvation right now. Thank you, Lord, because we know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. They will, you know, give you some sleeves and uh, ask some information from you. Uh, please uh, respond to them. And already, you have your faith in Christ that you are saved. We ask our moderating overseer pastor uh, to come and lead us at this time of counseling. And then I'll come back and we will all go through the open way into the healing of the Lord. Counselors, let's move around now. Please make sure you move everywhere. If you are watching online, you, are, you just gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message. This evening, there is a link below your player. Click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening to the radio or television, you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, the phone number, 
and your location address, that life SMS or WhatsApp, you can see the number there. Plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I take it again. Plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. There will be a special meeting. Tomorrow, lunch hour with Jesus for all those who gave their lives to Jesus by 3 p.m. at the crusade ground in the pavilion. Make sure you are there by 3 p.m. and God will bless you. Please cancel us. Make sure you take the correct phone number. And make sure you check up the GDIT is 11. Move around everywhere. Now that you are born again, you have given your life to Jesus. You cannot lie again. Tell them the truth. There will be a banquet globally on the 5th of February, Sunday, 2023, at All Deeper Life Bible Church headquarters. In Asaba here is Ezeli. That's where you will have it. Don't forget 5th February, 2023, at every Deeper Life headquarter. And it's going to be globally. Cancel us. Let's move everywhere. Make sure you attend to everyone that have raised their hands up. Those online, you do the same. And as they are tending to the people, you that are seated, be preparing yourself. Cancel us. I hope some people are at the pavilion. Let's make sure we go around everywhere. Cancel us. When you finish, stay there where the people have the challenges. You will see miracle tonight. Please make sure you move around. Those at the left hand side, if you are finished, you wave, you wave your flag up. Let's be fast. When you finish, stay there. Those in the middle, if you are finished, wave the flag. Let me see.
those online, you just gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening. There is a link there. Below your player, click it and fill the form. So that we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Those on the left hand side, if you are finished, you wave. Let me see. Those that are seated, make sure you're preparing. Be getting ready. Those are the right hand side. If you are finished, can you wave? Okay. Okay, I've seen. What about the pavilion? If you are finished, wave your hand or wave your flag. Okay. In the middle here, if you are finished with it, okay. I've not seen the flag at the left-hand side. If you are finished, okay. We'll get ready now. The counselor, stay where you are. Tonight, you will see miracle. Let's stand up and pray now. Let's stand up. Praise the Lord. Did you hear what the pastor said today? You will see miracle. I will see miracle. We started with Isaiah chapter 35. I'm looking at that again from verse 3. Isaiah Chapter 35, verse 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands. Every hand strengthen tonight in Jesus' name. Confirm the feeble knees. All those knees with arthritis cannot bend, cannot stand, cannot do anything. Tonight, they will be confirmed and it will be remain firm in Jesus' name. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, it says, Say to them that of a fearful heart will I be healed, will I be delivered. I came the other day and I went back the same the pain is too much. It says, be strong and fear not. Your time of healing has now come. It says, behold, your God will come. He'll come with vengeance. And all those things that are trying to rattle your body and raging in your body, it comes with vengeance tonight. And there'll be a recompense and your Lord will come and save and heal you. And then in verse 5, it tells us, Then the eyes of the blind shall be, tell me, open, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. And then in verse 6, it tells us, it says, Then that lame man shall leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. Yeah, that time has come. Look at it, the only way Christ. Look at it there, the ordained way Christ. And look at it there, the open way. And he rejects no one. And and since other people got in, the way the door is still open, you are going to get your healing. I will get, I will receive, I will experience, I believe. What are you? I believe. Raise up that hand online, over the radio, television, anywhere you are. Healing is coming now. The door is open. And as you raise up your hand, lay the other hand where you have the challenge. When you hear the final amen, it's done. Amen. For you, it's done. Amen. For her, it's done. Amen. The Lord will put testimony in your mouth. Raise up that hand. 
Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the open way you have given us. We thank you for Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our Healer, our Deliverer, our Redeemer that redeems us from the curse of the law. Lord, welcome everyone. There is room enough for everyone. There's grace enough for everyone. There is healing virtue enough for everyone. As we go in now by faith, trusting that you will heal, heal your people in Jesus' name. That racking up my grain in the head, I command that my grain come out in Jesus' name. And the tormented and tortured and traumatized brain, I pray there will be peace in that brain right now. And the people who are confused and just like they don't know whether to live or to die, and that sweet is telling them to end it up, I command that suicide spirit, come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those people that have that swelling under the armpit and they say this is cancer, this is terrible. I pray the Lord will touch that, uh, that uh, growth now. Come out in Jesus' name. And the one that has uh, that bleeding thing there, I pray that bleeding will stop right now. And I pray, Lord, that you deliver everyone that is suffering uh, and you heal them instantaneously now. And evidence of real healing and deliverance manifested in your body in Jesus' name. I pray that the internal pain and the internal pain in the stomach, internal pain and the bone so terrible, at this time now the hand of the Lord touch you. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for those eyes that are blind or dim, the Lord touch your eyes right now. And the Lord correct everything there and you see clearly now in Jesus' name. I pray for the people that have the deaf ears and the dumb tongues. Lord, I pray that you take that impediment, that impossibility there. Take it away in Jesus' name. Death begin to hear right now. The dumb begin to speak right now. I pray for the people that have that pile and that thing shooting out. I pray the Lord touch you now and remove that pile. Be healed in Jesus' name. That prostrate and growth and cancer, whatever, I pray the Lord touch you right now. You are healed. You are healed. Confirm it in their lives in Jesus' name. Diabetes, type 2, type 1, whatever, the Lord touch you right now. The Lord reverse that condition in your body now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Your kidney, your liver, your lungs, whatever is wrong, I pray the Lord will touch you. The healing virtue of the Lord comes upon you now. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. This one lame, paralyzed, having arthritis, I pray the Lord touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Those who are maimed, you have a part of your body missing, cut off, whatever, maybe an accident. I pray the Lord will do a recreation work in your body right now in Jesus' name. And the stiffness, the stiffness in your fingers, the stiffness in your arms, in your joints, and the stiffness in your body, I pray the Lord will touch you. Take everything away in Jesus' name wonder of healing wonder of deliverance wonder of liberation i pray will come upon every life now in jesus name here at the alpha location to my left to my right at the back in the front in the middle outside there in the overflow i pray healing flows into your body right now online in the congregation their community their hospital their prison there over the radio television everywhere this is the moment of your healing the moment of your deliverance you are healed you are delivered you are set free in jesus name manifestation now everywhere 
reality of healing everywhere testimonies in every mouth thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray Amen. it's there check up you'll discover your healing is there put your hand to 